Welcome to the Emily the Mystic Show. You're about to walk through a portal that leads to all things mystical, magical, spiritual, and supernatural. I'm your host, Emily. I'm a spiritual mentor and Akashic Records practitioner and teacher, an intuition development coach, and a galactic channeler. If you're an old soul on a self-discovery and healing journey, you are in the right place. We'll be diving in deep to some of my favorite mystical topics, including manifestation, past lives, the spirit world, energy, and so much more. Get ready to embrace your inner mystic and live your most authentic life possible. The portal is now open. Hello, my dear listener. I I am so freaking excited for today's conversation. I can't even tell you. <laughs> like, I have been looking forward to this. And it's so funny because I had asked my guides to send me a person in this specific line of work down my path. And she showed up <laughs> in perfect divine timing and alignment. And that is Michelle. Michelle, if you do not know her, is also known as Spirit Mama. She is a spirit baby oracle and a mama to two star seeds herself. Michelle has dedicated herself to helping pre mamas and all mamas connect with their spirit babies, empowering them to navigate the motherhood era with confidence. Over the past few years, Michelle has channeled the Spirit Baby Collective and the Bringers of Light by bringing through messages and inspiration to assist women in all things soul family creation. Welcome, Michelle, to the show. Thank you so much for having me. I am so excited to be here. (laughs) Yay. And so the listener can get to know you a little bit better. I would love if you could share your astrology, sun, moon, and rising, and your human design type. You know them. Yes, I do. So I'm a Libra sun and a Cancer moon and a Leo rising. So that Leo's in there. And then I have, uh, I'm a 6'2 generator in human design. Amazing. And of course, yeah. this is coming out during Leo season. So perfect, perfect divinely time. timed. <laughs> yeah. And I just feel like the Libra and Cancer and Leo combination is so perfect for what you do. Oh, I never even like I'm not that familiar with astrology. So that's I, that's cool to hear. Um, but that makes sense. I know the Libra. I know my emotions are definitely at play with the Cancer too. So Oh, That's yes. Cool. And cancer is so <laughs> nurturing and the domestic yeah, energy. Yes. yes. Yeah. So That's That's awesome. amazing. And where are you located in the world right now? I live in California, in central California. So it's a really small farm town, um, right smack dab in the middle in a, uh, a pistachio orchard. That's where I live. <laughs> so cool. <laughs> yeah. and what is bringing joy in your life right now this summer? Oh my gosh. It's been really being present with my family. I have been so focused on calling in my presence and bringing in gratitude to just day-to-day activities that sometimes, you know, can just become the normal thing, but I've really been tapping into my presence with the boys and with my husband doing lots of fun little trips, just the summer thing, but it's just so much more exciting when you can do it present and in with ease. And so that's really, but what's been bringing me joy is really I'm paying attention to that. Oh my gosh. I can relate to that so deeply. My month of July was spent traveling in different places. And this year I really felt like I had the ability to be present and enjoy it and stay grounded in the moment. So it I really makes a difference. More. Yeah, mm-hmm. it really does. So As I was sharing before at the beginning of this episode, I was saying that I had set the intention to meet someone who specializes in working with spirit babies. And lo and behold, the universe brought her my way. (laughs) She is also teaching a workshop for me in the membership, which as you're listening to this episode, you will still be able to sign up for. So if you enjoy our conversation today, please check that out. But anyway, Michelle, I would love to know in your own words, what do you do? And can you describe a little bit more about your work? Yes, of course. So I am a spirit baby channel. I love to communicate with the spirit baby and spirit baby collective specifically. Um, When I say spirit baby collective, it's really um, a beautiful uh, combination of guides that are here to assist in all things soul family creation. So they're really, they're not only coming in to assist with bringing babies earthside, which is a big part of what I do is assist other women to attune their frequency, to welcome babies earthside, 
but also they're here to help guide you in your mission and your path and finding your soul partner. And some of them are just guides. They're here to just help. And so it's, it's really cool for me to be that bridge to assist in the communication between mama and spirit baby. Mm, that's so beautiful and so needed at this time. We're going to get into this today, but I can't wait to talk about your thoughts on the new wave of souls who are coming here to this planet. But before we get there, I want to dive a little bit into your story and how you started on the intuitive path. So what led you here? What do you feel called to share? Oh my gosh. Okay. I could, I could start so many places, but I want to say my, my first son, when I was pregnant with him was really in 2018 was really when I felt like, okay, things are really different. I, I would consider that my biggest awakening in life. And then after having my son, it was another awakening in itself. And so I feel like that journey of, of having my first child, it like really opened me up to, there was so much more out there that I, I knew was there, but I was just like, where is it? And it's like that mama intuition started plugging in and I'm like, okay, I'm going to play with this. So with my children, both of them bring rebirths of myself. Not only did I birth children, but I rebirthed myself <laughs> in both. And so they have both brought me so many beautiful gifts. And I think one thing I'm so grateful for doing is stepping back and allowing myself to play with and trust the gifts that were coming in because they flooded in. It, it was like a lot. It was overwhelming at times. I was confused. I was like, who am I? Like, what is meditation? Like I was just, it was overwhelming, but I sat back and I let it come in and I've just been playing with it ever since. It's literally like my playground is spirituality in general. It just makes me so happy. Yes. <laughs> And I love how you describe yeah. it as just, you know, playing with it and leaning into mm -hmm. it because it's so true. I think we have this idea that it has to be so serious and full of so much hard work. And yes, of course there is healing. And yes, of course there are different layers to it, but ultimately there's so much joy in this path and so much joy it's in fun. this journey. So yeah, yes, it really is fun. <laughs> and how did that lead you to working with clients and creating a spiritual business around that? Yeah. So I started off with in Ayurveda, which is, um, uh, like a way, like a, a medicine. Um, I don't even know what it's like an ancient medicine, uh, technique. And they actually have this beautiful, um, it's called Ayurvedic postpartum doula work. So women specifically work with women who have had children for the first 42 days after birth, a very sacred time. And so I just, I loved working in that space. I studied it for a while. Mm. And that is what kind of led me into the space of working with other moms and, and the children. And, and really I saw the importance in it, but the catalyst of me welcoming in this beautiful gift of communicating specifically with spirit babies was when my sister was pregnant with her third. And this was a, a few years ago. And, um, she had um, a pregnancy where the bait were Kendrick. He's he's one year old now, a beautiful, thriving baby. But at the time when uh, she was pregnant with him, he had gastroschisis, which is where the intestines actually grow outside of his stomach rather than inside. So she was very stressed. And so I thought I can tap in for my sister. I was going to help her with her physical body, like a medical intuitive uh, channeling. And when I tapped in with her, uh, physical vessel, her baby Kendrick came right in and he's like, hi, I'm Kendrick. I want to say hi. And I want mommy to know that I'm safe. I want her to know that I love butterflies. So have her keep an eye out for those. So she'll know that when she sees those, she can trust that everything is okay. I chose this path. This is what like, he just was mm. all like, I was like, oh my gosh, what's going on? Am I, I'm talking to a baby. I, I, I like, it was the coolest thing ever. And so that was what started my path with like, okay, what else can I ask? What else can I do? How, you know, what else can we bring through? Um, and he, so he assisted her with her entire pregnancy, um, really more than anything, comforting her on this journey that could have been very stressful. The doctors were saying how this is dangerous and all these things. And he was just offering this trust and everything is happening. Perfect mama. I'm right here. And so that was the first, my first experience with spirit babies or me channeling them myself. 
And it was so cool, so exciting. Unicorns, rainbows, all the things. Everything you think of when you think of children is what comes in when I'm speaking with spirit babies. And that's why I love that space so much. It's just fun. (laughs) Yes. Oh my gosh, so true. And I know a lot of the people in the audience are intuitives and are able to channel themselves. So what would you say the differences are and how did it come through for you when you started channeling a spirit baby? Because I think someone who's intuitive may wonder, well, what does it feel like to connect with that energy and how can I discern that it's Mm -hmm. a baby versus something else? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, What I noticed was that they come in very light and um, uh, they they only want to come in when it's a very nourishing and loving environment. So they're not going to really come in when it feels very stressed, like the feeling of a womb, literally of a womb. Mm -hmm. You want to bring that into your environment when you're calling in spirit babies, because that's the space where they feel comfortable to communicate. So a lot of the times they can be really quiet and really shy. And they like to, for me specifically, when they're communicating, I see a lot of images, which then just turn into a knowing, like I could see a strawberry, but I know the entire story of what that means. Like it just pops in for the knowing. And so it's really allowing yourself to listen and trust that these really faint whispers are actually these beautiful, beautiful words from these spirit babies that the more that you can share with them that, oh, I am hearing, I am listening, I'm willing to connect and offer you the safe space to connect, then they'll like tiptoe in and be like, okay, I'm here. But it's almost like they're a little nervous and shy in the beginning. And so you just need to be open to it and trust, trust the messages that are coming through. Mm, Yeah. So important. So important with any type of channeling. I mean, I love that. And I love the idea of creating a safe space. I feel like that's so important as well. So I have a lot of questions and I would love to know for, let's start with talking about moms who are wanting to conceive when it comes to connecting with a spirit baby how do we know? Oh my gosh. I need to think about how I want to phrase this question (laughs) (laughs) because I want to talk about moms who are wanting to conceive. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm just trying to get myself like lined up here. My first question for you, Michelle, is what types of clients do you work with and what do women seek you out for support with when it comes to connecting with spirit babies? I'm really open to working with anybody who feels the calling to connect with a spirit baby, because when a spirit baby is reaching out to you, when they're in your field, when you feel called to that topic, then there is a message for you there. And and this could even be women who do not desire children, women who are past the child birthing age, um, women who are way before they want to conceive. There are messages for you in those spaces. I would say that the most common um, uh, women that come to me are those who are on the conception journey, who are struggling with conception, who or who are worried about being able to conceive, and they're like starting the journey up. And so what I find is that more than anything, baby wants to bring through that trust and that like that knowing and comfort in the journey, because when mama is stressed, and worried about what's to come, then that's like a block. That's a frequency block. Baby can't, can't come in that way. There needs to be this frequency of, of like openness and trust. And so really what I'm bringing through are just the messages to offer clarity on the path ahead. And it's all ready within the mom. They already know, they already know within, I'm just kind of opening that up to allow those messages to come through for them. This is really already within them. And so I I noticed that really a lot of the sessions are just like these aha moments. And like, I knew that, or I felt that it's like, of course you did. You have this motherly intuition. You have a womb, a beautiful creative center. You're magical. Like it's all within you. I'm just reminding them and the spirit babies are helping. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Yeah. It's so true. I, I feel like we are so much more intuitive than we give ourselves credit for. And we're already sort of intuiting and receiving the message. And I love how you said that as a channel, sometimes it's your job to just 
confirm and validate yeah. that what they're receiving is is real and true. And so when it comes to that conception journey, do you have any tips or guidance for someone who is on that journey who would love to open themselves up for getting ready mm -hmm. for conceiving? I I really feel the importance of womb work, of working with your womb and trusting it, getting to know your womb. And um, like, I feel like sometimes... It, we forget that it's even there <laughs> and mm -hmm. your womb really wants to feel heard and feel seen and so that's one of the most important um topics that I like to share is just like offering your womb love like I love you sending it light like you don't have to like I don't feel like you have to do these big journeys all the time to just send your womb love right and so by doing this we're offering this nourishing and loving environment to this space that you're desiring to welcome a baby into right and so you're like, you're letting love grow within this space. So that's the first thing I would, I would share. I also feel like it's super beneficial um, to begin communicating and connecting with your child, even before you even think you want to conceive there. Um, it's like building a relationship and building a trust. And it's just going to help um, with the path ahead in terms of, First, you're going to have an inner knowing that everything is is working out as it should, but also it's like you're starting the initiation of the of the conversation with the baby, and they might have a lot of things that they desire you to maybe live somewhere or be close to water or um, little tweaks here and there that will kind of get you in motion to get you to the space where you're prepared to welcome a baby. Um, so it's never too early to begin the communication process calling them in and just saying, Hey, I'm here. I'm listening. Um, I'm ready to communicate. So even for someone out there listening, who is not ready immediately to have children yet, but could see themselves being a mom and a couple of years from now, five years from now, would you say it's still worthwhile to start that process? So much. So I, they have so many, the messages that they come through with, I'm like, oh, I'm always receiving the coolest. I just love doing the readings because I'm receiving a reading at the same time. I'm like, oh, I love that. Um, they have so many great tips and tricks for your mission, your path, um, because soul family is a huge chunk of most people's path and paths. Most souls paths are soul family and your divine partner and your children. Like these are a lot of things that most of the time are really important. And so this is a big chunk. So why wouldn't you want to start preparing in any way possible on this big path that you have ahead head for you? Oh my gosh, 100%. And that I feel like is something we don't always take into account because we're so caught up in our own specific purpose and our path. Yeah. And we, and yes, of course, it's important to be selfish and to consider yourself in your own soul's journey. But I love what you said about the family piece being such an integral part of that. Is there anything else you have to share on the soul family that you think would be helpful for the listener to know? Yeah. Well, when you said that, it like reminded me, it's like, it's so true because a lot of, I feel like this generation, we really are working on ourselves and our mission and our path and on our passions and our being our authentic self. And mm -hmm. all of these things are beautiful, but sometimes we don't think too far ahead in the fat in the, like the theme of soul family. And so we'll get to a point where I find a lot of women are like, Oh wait, now I do want a partner because I do want a child. And I do want you know, and they'll be, you know, 38, 42. And they're, they're concerned because they think, oh, no, I waited too long. And, and all these worries come to play when you could have really brought through a trust in the journey to know that, hey, this is actually the timing that my child is desiring. A lot of children, a lot of the children coming in are desiring a wisdom held womb. And a lot of these are women over 45. And so mm -hmm. if you knew that, you know, a little bit before, like in the thirties, then maybe it would like help you to like ease into the path a little bit more and not like, like, oh my gosh, what just happened? I wasn't even thinking about this until now. And I feel like I'm behind. So it's just kind of offering you to, to really, it's like preparing. It's like manifesting. It's like a dream board. Like you want to think far ahead. You don't want to think just next month or next year, really look into your future because you can prepare for it right now. 
Oh my gosh. Someone needed to hear that because I had full body chills as you were talking. Yeah, good. <laughs> and also too, I have to share from my own life. My mom had me when she was 45 and that was in the nineties, you know? So yeah. still absolutely beautiful. No matter what age you are, it's so divinely timed for a reason. I agree. Yeah. I know someone out there because I keep having this question pop in. <clears throat> I would love if you could talk a little bit about the energetics behind gender, because mm -hmm. I'm sure you're able to sense and pick up on more of a female versus a male energy. And what sort of role does gender play? And also, can spirit babies switch genders? Is it more likely that they'll incarnate as one gender versus another? Like, what, what kind of does that look like? What have you learned about that? Yeah, what I've noticed is um, a lot of the times baby will come through with a gender, there'll be more of a feminine energy, or more of a masculine energy. But we know that we can be a female in our body, but have a very masculine energy that doesn't, totally. you know, it, yeah. it's totally a possible thing. Uh, another thing that I'm noticing is that babies will play with genders in the spirit realm, they're like, okay, I'm going to be more in the masculine right now because that's what I'm needing to do. And then more in the feminine at a different time. And then once they have get closer to coming earth side, then they're kind of deciding, okay, they're kind of planning their path a little bit more strategically mm -hmm. and they know their mission. And so they'll, they'll choose what gender is going to fulfill this mission. And so for a lot of missions, it doesn't really require you to be masculine, female, or feminine it doesn't really require you either. Um, so they can switch. Although I have found that there are some that are set, they're completely a feminine energy, they know what they desire, and they need that feminine energy that they need to be that gender in that lifetime, right to, to fulfill what what their mission is. Um, so yeah, it, it is very fluid. It's um, sometimes I will see spirit as just um, an orb of like a neutral color. Like, and so I see that as they're just, they're not decided yet, which is also very beautiful in itself. So they're, they're, they're playing a lot. They're trying personalities. They're trying genders. They're trying different things out and they're preparing themselves to know what they desire once they come earth side. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. That's so fascinating. That makes so much sense though. Is it possible for a spirit baby to decide that a different family is a better fit for them? Or what is it sort of like <laughs> choosing yeah. the parent process look like from what you've yeah. discerned? What I have seen is that a lot of spirit babies will have like their, their pick, like they're, they're with you for, for a while. Right. But as we all have freedom of choice, we all have free will, um, our timelines can shift. And so as they do, so can our spirit baby's timelines. They can decide if their mission isn't going to be fulfilled best and that in that space, then they can switch. Um, usually when I find that women are um, coming to me and wanting to speak with their spirit babies, um, it feels very much like these babies are with them for life. Um, most of the time they're there, no matter what they're a guide and they're connected with them in any way possible. There are some that choose because maybe this, this woman or this, uh, you know, decides she doesn't want to have children anymore, but she does have the spirit baby that is, you know, connected. Um, this baby can actually come earth side and be a part of her life in a different way. If that fulfills the mission. So maybe this would be a niece or somebody that they meet one day later in life. Like there's definitely a soul contract and a tie there. Um, it doesn't always have to be your child. Um, but if they're a guide, if they're connected to you, there's a connection that will be with you for, for I believe, for this life, from what I've experienced. Mm, that's so cool and so interesting. And what role does the partner play? Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> so many roles. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> um, spirit baby obviously wants to, um, uh, okay, where do I start? First, I could start with that. Men have spirit babies as well. They have children that are connected with them and that are following them. If they desire to be with this, this man and they want them to be their father, then they are, they're following along for the ride. And so both uh, women and men can have their spirit babies um, connected with them. 
Um, and then there's also where partners, two uh, partners have the same spirit baby connected and there were, the baby is working on both, both mom and dad, like, you know, getting them where they yeah. need to go to, so that they can come together because their biggest mission is like, okay, mommy and daddy need to get together so I can come outside. Most of the time, that's what they're focused on, right? So they're bringing that energy through. Um, if you, as a woman, if you're wanting to get pregnant and you don't have a partner yet, or even you do, and you have your spirit baby, you're like, why is it spirit baby coming through? Sometimes they don't love the frequency of the partner. Mm. And so sometimes they're like, I'm just, I'm not going to come in with this partner. And maybe that would just be for the life. Maybe, mm. you know, if you choose to be with this partner for forever, then that baby would decide to come in a different way. Or maybe you find yourself in 10 years, you're with somebody else and you're like, wow, I got pregnant so quickly. It's because baby was waiting for that frequency. Baby wasn't going to come through the other way. So they have their opinion on who their father, who their mother is. And um, yeah, so sometimes that can be a block for some women. Mm, oh my gosh. That <laughs> is so interesting. I also yeah. find it fascinating too, that they have their own mission and their own plan and they will figure it out however they need to figure it out. Whether that be again, like you said, coming in as a different role relationship yeah. or whether it be when you've chosen a different partner or your partner has gotten to a, a different frequency, a different place that they will decide to come in at that point. I remember I was working with a client a few years ago who was on a conception journey and she was having trouble getting pregnant at first and was frustrated around it. And I remember channeling the message for her that her husband needed to be at home at time mm -hmm. at the time because he was traveling everywhere and he wasn't stable and grounded sort of in their family home environment. And as soon as he <laughs> got home, <laughs> stopped traveling she got pregnant and gave birth wow. to this child, which is so fascinating. I love that. And you're, you're so right. It's like a frequency shift. Like he, he like shifted his frequency into a more stable environment, what the baby was calling through. And look, it, it's like that it's, it's instant. <laughs> That's so cool. Yes. <laughs> I love that. I know. I know. And on that note too, this also begs the question Oh my gosh. I'm sorry. The guides are literally peppering me with so many questions <laughs> and I am trying to maintain my focus. Okay. First of all, twins. How do we mm -hmm. feel about twins? What do you know about twins at a soul level? Oh, that's, that's beautiful. Um, I have never got to, I haven't yet got to channel with actual twins that have come earth side yet. I have channeled with specific twins and I see them but I haven't actually seen them birth yet. So I'm like, how does this, how does this work? I want to see the whole process. So I don't, I don't know too, too much about um, twins in that, that aspect, but what's coming through is that there's this beautiful mission and it's like a co-mission. Like they're both are fulfilling it with each other and they chose to do it together. And so there's this beautiful contract that was, that was put into place for them to be and do this together. I also see they're showing me like a DNA connection, like in a, in like a lifetimes and lifetimes of like, they were, they purposefully need to be here in this lifetime together. And so, um, yeah, they're just showing it. Like it feels very, um, they keep saying fulfilling a mission. So it just feels like they were meant to be, to be together for this mission. And so that was required for them to come together or even how you see women having, you know, um, more than two, like three triplets and all these things, like they're required to be together so that their frequencies can meld together to assist in whatever mm -hmm. that path is. Mm -hmm. It's all frequency thing. There's this really cool thing about harmonizing. And so they bring their own frequency within themselves, but then because they're together, they're this beautiful combined frequency that is required to come to earth at that time. Oh, that makes so much sense. Yeah. And that they would have a joint mission or a group mission Yeah, in connection with the mother, the father, the whole soul family. Wow. And also the other question that's sitting with me in cases of child loss, mm -hmm. so miscarriages or women who have the experience of losing a baby, 
what do you have to say on that topic? What have you come to learn from channeling around that? Yeah, definitely. I'll first share that I actually have personally experienced a miscarriage between um, both of my boys. Um, and I knew she was a girl. Um, I knew who she, like I felt her presence with me for very uh, many, many years. And um, so actually when I was pregnant with my second son and I found out that he was a boy, I was like, wait, that was one, that was a huge lesson for me on the gender and like, you know, all these things. And I, I tapped in and, and it's actually, he's a different soul. He is not the, the soul that I that I had the miscarriage with. And that really was hard for me. Cause I was like, okay, so if I only have two children, will I never get to meet this soul that I was pregnant with? It was a, it was a very like, you know, a tough time for me to emotionally wrap around. And so what helped me was channeling for other women who have also experienced this it helped me to see what, how spirit babies see it. And so a lot of the time, how spirit babies see this are usually two, two factors. One, they just desired to have a taste of earth side. They never really wanted to be here that long. And so they're very, very grateful that mother sacrificed her body, her physical vessel and emotion to welcome baby and then to allow baby to go back. Um, so they're always so, so grateful when that was the contract, because that can be very hard for the mother, um, for the family. And, um, so that's a big mission that has taken place. Um, also there are babies that decided to come earthside and then they felt the frequency and they're like, Whoa, whoa, whoa I got to go back. Like I am not ready yet. That was too much. Earth is dense. Earth is definitely yeah. in, like intense, right? So sometimes they're like, okay, whew, I needed to get that little taster. I'm going back. I'm going to revamp. I'm heading back in later. So it really depends on what, you know, what the soul decides. Um, so I see a lot of the time that baby came through. It was a little bit too intense. The situation wasn't the way they wanted it. The frequency was not what they had desired. And they're like, I I'm going to head back, but they prepare to come back earthside. I have seen that most of the the time. That is so fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. And also too helps us understand from a frequency perspective, why sometimes these things happen, even if it's yeah. really emotionally challenging and hard to have to navigate that and heal from that. So that makes so much sense and definitely feel like someone out there needed to hear that. Cause I felt that message so deeply. Yeah, I agree. I want to switch gears a little bit and talk about the spirit baby collective that you connect with, because I know there are channels out there who talk about this sort of new wave of souls that's coming in. So what have you come to learn on that topic? Let's dive in there. Oh my God. I love this. There are so many like new waves and new themes of souls coming Earthside. I have, and so that's really where the collective came to play. It's like, it's not just one, <laughs> there's so many. And so they wanted to be called the collective because they're, they're all kind of gathering together in the space to come earth side, but we have our galactic babies. We have our star babies. We have our rainbow babies. We have our spirit babies. I, I there's, and how I see them is usually they look different. Um, they have a different frequency, like a, literally a different frequency to them. The galactic babies, actually, when I see them, when I'm um, channeling their eggs, they're like blue eggs. <laughs> they're really cool. And those are the babies or the children that are coming earth side that um, we'll notice. They're just like different. They're, they're not bad different, but they're just not like, um, uh, you know how some people would say socially awkward, or you just like, you just can tell that they don't, they haven't been to earth that many times, right? They're a new soul. These are going to be mm. the new souls. They're going to bring through, like, they're going to make us rethink so many things mm. and they are needed to come earth side right now. And then we have our star babies that are bringing through this beautiful illuminated light and frequency. It's like grid work through a child. They're like bringing through this inner knowing um, it, so each of them have their own kind of theme of gifts. And so that's why I feel like they, they have their different names. Um, and so the collective is just all of them combined. So I get to kind of 
channel when I'm channeling the collective, I'm channeling like the overall frequency of the baby's coming earth side. I'm not channeling just one specific spirit baby um, for somebody. It's actually just the collective in general to bring through um, a broader message that is needed um, for whoever I'm I'm speaking with. Who are the rainbow babies? Oh, rainbow babies. They like a lot of them. I, when I see them, they feel like they are babies who have like come or decide to have gone back and are coming back again. It almost like when you see like for me, my rainbow babies are miscarriage babies or babies who maybe were aborted. Um, or, um, like there was something where they're, so it's like, they're this beautiful bridge. Like they have this essence of earth side already within them and they're bridging this rainbow back to earth side. Um, and they have this beautiful, um, essence and frequency to them that feels just very hopeful it's just mm. a very hopeful feeling um yeah mm, that's yeah. so beautiful I actually am gonna ask about I am going to ask that we talk about the abortion question because I think that's mm-hmm. so interesting and I'm sure there's someone listening who's been through that and has experienced that and has needed to heal from that what have you learned? from channeling that energy for someone who has been through an abortion what do you have to say on that topic yeah I noticed that a lot of the time when I speak with um, someone who has experienced an abortion that there is a lot of pain and guilt that is held within Um, and so a lot of the time when I'm channeling for them it's really um, offering them that clarity and that healing and forgiveness that they really need to give themselves because baby never ever has, um, is mad or upset at the situation. It was all supposed to happen. How it happened to the baby. The baby is trusting the path, trusting divine timing and trust completely. And so there's really nothing that you could have done wrong to the baby. Um, sometimes for some children, it'd be like, okay, that's their path is like, they're, they're switching up their path a little bit. Right. A lot of the times it was part of their path was that they wanted it to happen that way. Maybe it's a karmic or a soul contract that needed to get severed or, you know, cleansed or cleared, and then they can move on from there. Um, And so they're never really angry or upset about it. They just want to bring through loving. It feels a lot of the times it feels like they bring through a mothering energy to the mother. Like, so the mom who's wanting to connect with their spirit baby who they have aborted, the baby is actually coming through and giving them the love and, and like hugging them and like giving them the nourishment that they really need to move forward on their path because they haven't done anything wrong or, or hurtful to the baby. They want them to realize that, that they are just where they need to be and they forgive them completely. There's nothing to be um, upset or, or hurt by anymore and they want you to just release that is really what they want to bring through Mm, my gosh that is so powerful and so profound for someone who needs to hear that message I feel like a big takeaway that I'm leaving with a lot of what we've spoken about so far is that it's all so divinely guided and we Mm -hmm. often as humans beat ourselves up for what we perceive as mistakes or things that we've done wrong, or we're not good enough, or we're not doing the right thing, or we're not on the right path. We're misaligned. All of this self-talk that's so Mm -hmm. negative that we can often have, but in reality, it is all happening exactly as it needs to happen. Yeah. And the, the spirit baby is just playing a role in that and is helping to facilitate that process so that you can live your best life and eventually they can come here and assist in that journey. Wow. I couldn't have said it better myself. That's exactly how it feels. And it's so true. It's like, these were lessons that were required for almost maybe for you to divert your path or for you to learn a lesson or a, you know, a tie that needed to be, um, uh, you know, sealed like, um, or, or a karmic tie that needed to be settled. Right. And so there were lessons from that you are a different person from all of these lessons. And that is exactly where you need to be because that's what is divine about this life. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. It's so, so true. Okay. (laughs) Let me think, where do I want to go next? Is there anything I haven't asked you yet? Hmm. (sighs) 
This is just so, I always have so much fun doing this stuff. <laughs> I just love talking about I know. babies. Um, but I don't, I feel like it's, it's felt very good. Like, I love that you've hit a lot of the, the main topics, um, the, the conception and the pregnancy, you know, um, uh, oh, I guess I could, it could be about, um, mothers who have children or sight already. Yes. I can tap in with those children like that. Yeah. That could be maybe a topic we could, we could go over a little bit. Yeah. Perfect. So let's switch gears again and chat about women who already have children, the moms out there, maybe even grandmothers <laughs> out there. <Yeah. laughs> what do they need to hear? What have you noticed when doing the spirit baby work? What do you have to say on that? Okay. I love this topic because this is kind of where I'm at right now. Um, I love tapping in with my son, um, both of my sons. I specifically tap in with my five-year-old maybe because he's like at the age where I really need help. <laughs> um, but I, so I'm able to tap in with this beautiful spirit baby essence, even when children are already earth side. Um, and so they're assisting with just like, this new earth of, of, of like raising a child in this earth, like their, the, their plans are to really shift and shake up what's currently happening on planet earth. So, um, they are totally here to assist in any way and how we can, you know, do things differently. Um, homeschooling is a big topic that I've been dabbling with myself personally. I know that for parents, there are so many, um, different things and topics you can learn about and, you know, it can get overwhelming. Like you, like there's this feeling of you need to do it all for your children. And I think a lot of the times what they want to share is that you're doing everything exactly how it needs to be done. And just your presence and love and nourishment is all that is required. Your attention to them and your, your presence with them is really what they're desiring. And then everything else is going to fall into place. So the more that you trust that path and know that if you are required to know it or need to hear it, it will come to you. It will come to that intuition. It will come to your inner knowing and just kind of live life in this beautiful, playful way with your children. That's what they desire. They're on their mission. They know what they're doing and all they need is for you to be there with them. Oh, I love that so much because I feel like as women, we so often think that and we step into this role and energy of needing to fix things yeah. and needing to fix things that we perceive are, are a problem or needing to parent our children because they're navigating some challenge or some hardship. And we think it's, you know, our responsibility to step in and fix it. And sometimes what our kids need more than anything is that presence and that love to love them for yeah. where they're at right now, no matter what they're going through or what they're navigating, instead of trying to like force things or force the issue or have to, you know, fix things and immediately make them better. Sometimes it's more so like you said about the presence. Yeah, it's so true. It's, it's, and a lot of the presence come from, comes from, in my experience, just a regulated nervous system and allowing yourself to just you know, you kind of got to help yourself. You got to fill your cup because that's how you can um, emanate that frequency for your children to feel that too. They're really feeding off of what you're, what you're giving. So if you're really stressed and you're, you know, worried about all these things, they're going to feel that and they're going to, they're going to, you know, go with that energy. So the more that you can really hone in on what, what you need and desire, your, your family is going to, it's going to bleed into that. And it's just going to be felt everywhere and all around. Yes. Yeah. One thing I've really noticed with my clients is that when kids are at a certain age or stage, often that can be such a mirror for what mom yeah, so true. <laughs> is either going through yeah. or some aspect of mom's childhood. Like, let's say your kid is age seven and is really giving you a hard time. There may be something for you to take a look at from when you were seven years old. So Ooh, I love that. Yeah, I, I need think... to check that out. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> I sometimes there can be an internal healing component that needs to be focused on that we need to bring presence to versus how can I fix things or make things better like we were just talking about. I love that. Well said. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to your work and helping women connect with spirit babies, what does that look like? What kind of offerings do you have? How do you help people with that specifically? 
Yeah. So I love to work with spirit baby communication and light language. They go together really well. Um, I've noticed that spirit babies are utilizing my vessel to bring through a frequency. And so through my voice and through my um, light codes and language, I'm able to bring through the frequency that baby wants mama to experience to really welcome her vessel into the frequency to either welcome baby earth side or for a mom to be in a regulated state with her children earth side or, you know, so it's a frequency um, sharing that I, I love to do with my reading. So um, I have a, an offering called spirit baby illumination where I get kind of get to do it all. I get to do like spirit baby channeling and bring through all the fun messages, which is like the really fun part um, for, for me. Cause I love the channel, but then we get to bring through the light codes, which are being channeled through me at the same time. And I actually send a recording of that. So mama can really um, tap in with that frequency on a regular basis. So those are the main um, things that I like to work with when I am offering um, my gifts to um, mothers who are desiring to communicate with their spirit baby. I like to just always share that if, like I've said before, if, if a spirit baby is reaching out to you, there's a message in there to be uncovered. I know sometimes, um, you know, there's like this pressure, like, well, I don't want children yet, or I haven't decided yet. And it's like, it's almost like a scary thing to dabble with if you're not there yet, but they're like, no, 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 we're here, no pressure, but we would love to help. <laughs> And so, you know, that's kind of how they come up. So, um, yes. And then continuing on with that, I also, um, offer recorded sessions. Like, um, I, I call them light code activation and, um, hypnosis sessions where we can really, um, bring you into a, a sense of, um, knowing and trust on your path, wherever you are in your motherhood journey. Um, maybe you're pregnant and you're really wanting to settle into your, you know, your third trimester to prepare for birth, um, these types of things. Um, so I offer, I love to offer recordings. I like to use my voice because they're like, use your voice. This is what's needed. So, um, a lot of my offerings have um, that at play. Mm. So many powerful things. I cannot wait for everyone to connect with you. Where can people find you? Um, best place to find me is on Instagram. That's where I love to be. Um, it's at Spirit Mama Michelle. And then I just started a YouTube channel. Finally, I've been wanting to do it for the longest time. Um, that is at Spirit Mama the channel on YouTube. Um, so I'll be, you know, if you guys have any questions or you want me to answer, you know, more then let me know on Instagram. I love to hear, and I can share videos on YouTube that way, but all of my newest offerings will always be up to date on Instagram and you can join my, um, love letters. I call is what I call them. My newsletters <laughs> to, um, you know, if you, if I have anything new coming out, that's the best way to, to keep in touch. Hmm. Perfect. I will definitely be checking out your YouTube channel. That sounds amazing. <laughs> okay. Thank you. For someone who wants to connect or try to connect with their spirit babies themselves, do you have any tips for opening up to that connection? What would you yeah. recommend? Okay. So first thing that comes to mind is to really tap in with your womb space, send it the love, bring the nourishment to your body before you're going to initiate connect communication with spirit baby. Um, Another tip would be to focus in on your heart space when you are wanting to connect. It's almost like I envision it as coming from my heart and then coming up and the baby like is able to communicate through my heart. And that's where I'm listening. I'm not listening in my head. I'm listening in my heart. It's like a feeling. They like to communicate this way. Uh, another thing, another great tip would be when you're initiating communication, it could just be something as simple as saying, Hey baby, I want to talk. Like, how can we communicate more is to do it while um, in or around water. They love water. It's a beautiful conduit for them. So I always suggest to uh, my clients to try like maybe if they're taking a bath, when they're in the bath, do a, like a little meditation or something and then call in spirit baby that way. Um, I've noticed that that's a beautiful, beautiful way for them to come in more easily. Um, yeah, and just allowing the messages to come through, trusting them and asking for a sign, ask your baby, say, Hey, here's a sign. Maybe you can offer them a sign or let them offer one to you. 
And so whenever you see that, you see maybe it's a feather or a, you know, a strawberry, whatever this is, when you see it, you're like, oh, spirit baby's here, spirit baby's with me. And it just, once you really gain the trust that you are communicating with baby, it's just about learning the communication from oh. there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> we, you know, I, I, we talk a lot about asking for signs from your spirit guides or your loved ones, but asking for a sign from your spirit baby is wow. What a powerful yeah. thing to do. I'm going yeah, to, yeah, it's that. cool. I love it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we have to, of course, end this episode by topic talking about living a mystical life. So Michelle, what does being a mystic mean to you? Mm, I love this. I love this question. Um, for me, being a mystic is just really trusting my light, trusting this beautiful light that I have within and playing with it, playing with the magic of life every single day and seeing that beautiful light in others because it's all around. We all have it. And so it's just playing with the magic. Mm. And I feel like you've given us so many tips for living a mystical life. Is there anything (laughs) else? you feel to share (laughs) of course um I like I said before presence I really feel like when you're present you're able to enjoy enjoy and bring in what it is that you're desiring um so really just follow what makes you happy and if something that like you know makes you happy and you know like what what is this just follow it try it out that's all I'm asking I really it's so much fun when you do this because when you're in the moment and you're following what makes you happy trusting that these when these messages are coming through for you there's just it's just such a fun and fun beautiful experience to have in life Mm -hmm. I couldn't I couldn't you know ask more than just to be present and to live your life to your to your most happy I'm getting nudged to ask you this final question which is are there any messages you've been receiving from the spirit baby collective recently or anything that you feel called to share today mm. that's really coming forward for you? Yeah, they've been sharing a lot about emotions at play. They've been sharing for like for me specifically, and I'm sure when I'm being shared this for myself, this is for also my collective. It's that when you're feeling a certain emotion in your body, to really allow yourself to tap into it. And like, there's a key code there. So not to fight the nudges of maybe overwhelm or anxiety or feelings that we're kind of afraid to experience, to always look at it as a beautiful key code to whatever it is that you're needing to hear. And then just kind of following the steps, like they're showing like, um, like a, like a path of rocks in the water, like, follow that beautiful path. And there's something waiting for you at the end, especially during this time. Um, sometimes emotions can be high, use them to, to the, your benefit because they're magical. They can be utilized is what they're sharing. Mm, and there's a message in your emotions. There's a message. Yes. yes. And to sit with that because it's leading you down whatever path you need to take next. Yeah. Hmm. Yes, beautiful medicine and beautiful magic to li- to leave us to end on. <laughs> yeah. I'm getting tongue tied. I know the channel's <laughs> open when I start to get tongue tied. Yeah. Um, I love it so much. And also for everyone listening, join the Emily the Mystic membership because on August 27th, Michelle will be joining us for a Spirit Baby workshop, which is going to be so magical. And I can't wait for that. So if you enjoyed today's episode, you want to experience more of Michelle please join the membership, join the workshop. And of course, I will leave all of Michelle's information in the show notes so you can connect with her and book a session. Yay. Thank you so much for having me. It was so much fun. Spirit Baby Collective is very, very grateful that they got to get their voice out there. (laughs) And me too. (laughs) Yes. So happy to spread the word. And thank you for sharing your magic with us today. Thank you.